Do you believe every screenplay a screenwriter writes begins with their five favorite movies? Um, no. Um, and they're probably better off leaning into their favorite films to inspire what's next for them. Um, because our favorite scripts, our favorite films or shows, depending on what we're, what we're writing, um, spoke to us in a deep way. Um, because let's, I mean, let's look at this. Uh, there's tens of thousands of movies and shows that we could have watched in our lifetime. You know, 1% of them or whatever we've actually seen. So thousands of people, thousands of movies and shows, thousands of hours for sure. If you, you get to the point where you're writing a screenplay, you've probably seen, you know, thousands of hours of, of, of content. So of that, let's say it's a thousand just for hypothetical, which are the favorites? And why are those the favorites? And then when you get down to the specificity of my favorite seven films, it's not going to be like anybody else's favorite seven on the planet. So you're talking about a very specific, almost code of what speaks to me. And if you take a look at that, there's connective tissue um, in terms of theme or character arc or genre um, or just feel or tone or things. And it... It's, um, I found very instructive for me and for writers that I mentor to use that as the well. I mean, this is what, they could have picked anything, right? They could have, you know, but the ones that they saw and of the ones they saw, these are the ones that sort of stirred their soul. So why would you not use that as a resource to say, this is what I love most and now I'm going to do my version of that? Sure. What if we're at a risk of, of putting too many, let's say we're taking from Black Swan or we're taking, the, you know, from the opening of Forrest Gump or what, you know, we're, we're infusing too many things that have already been done and people can spot that and say, yeah, you were, that that's... Derivative. Right. We, we, we recognize so, that. So the, um, what we're always looking for is the same but different. If we're... Um, if it's too much the same, like you're talking about, then it feels too derivative, it's, it's, it's boring, right? If it's too different, um, it's just it's too kind of weird, it's too idiosyncratic, and it's like whatever, right? Um, the stuff that's speaking to you most deeply has a beautiful balance of the same but different, someplace right in the middle. And when I create my new version of the same but different, um, <laughs> that's where the magic is. I mean, that's where the really profound beauty is. Um, if I try to do that and it's feeling derivative, then I've just leaned over to this pole too much and I need to go, oh, okay, I'm, I'm borrowing too much from my favorite stuff. How do I make it more personal to me? What was going on in my life that inspired me to like that movie? What is it that you know, so if you look at something like Star Wars, right? None of us were starfighters or, or uh, you know, you know, what do you call him? Um, he's a, a, a fighter pilot or whatever it was um, for the rebellion. But like the way, you know, like in, in episode four, I'm talking about the way that he um, interacted with his, his family, his aunt and uncle, and the way he kind of was like, you know, had to do his chores. And then um, he had this calling to go on this adventure to face the, uh, the empire. Um, we relate to that because if we do, if, if we relate to that, we're relating because we feel similar things in our own sort of experience, right? So um, so if episode four is on my list of favorite movies, um, you know, you might take that it's sci-fi from it, you might take that it's a hero's journey story, you might take that it's um, that he kind of had this mundane sort of teenager type life and he was called for some more sort of adventure. There's different things that you can take and if I take X from it and I'm putting it in my screenplay and I'm getting a reaction from people I respect who are going, yeah, this feels like it's too close to Star Wars, then it's like, okay, that's interesting. How do I make it more personal to me? You know, because what I'm probably not doing is going deep enough into what I love about this, that material. Can I give this a try with some of my favorite movies? One of them being Forrest Gump. I, mean, I can speak to Forrest Gump okay, somewhat. I mean, about... um, I mean, I saw it when it came out, but it's such an iconic film, so I have some thoughts on it. Um, if that were on, um, 
uh, somebody's list of favorite movies, you know, you might take a, again, it's to, it, the thing is to look at the, the whole series, right? Um, if you look at seven, and if, and if let's say all of them were fairly similar to, to Forrest Gump, um, there's a there's a playfulness in that, there's an innocence. It's sort of, um, I mean, Blake would call it the full triumphant story. Um, and so I would, you know, I would look at that type of story. Um, I would look at um, the type of protagonist that was sort of a special needs protagonist. This idea that life is nothing but a box of chocolate. So that's a thematic idea that might speak to you. Um, the setting, it was like in the South, right? In like Georgia or someplace or Alabama. Um, so I would take those elements and just note them. So it's, it's a soft, easy process. And then list your other six favorite movies. Um, and then you start looking about, like, are there any other movies that are full triumphant type movies from Blake Snyder's process, or any other movies that are sort of set in the South, or any other movies about um, characters that had special needs, or any other movies that have thematic idea of sort of, you know, um, uh, you know, like, like, like life is like a box of chocolates or whatever that was, or um, you know, they talked about there was sort of nostalgia stuff going on in there too. So you just take the pieces and you start looking through it. So, um, and then you will see connective tissues and you'll realize I'm drawn to these things for really deep reasons. And when you come with your new material, you create your new material from those deeper reasons, it's almost certainly gonna be more resonant, more singular, and you are speaking to that as a creative authority on what you love the most because those are your favorite damn movies and you can talk about them all day long as an authority. And so when you come from that sort of swagger and love and passion, that's exactly what Hollywood is looking for. They're looking for you to be the creative leader on your sensibility, because that's what we're doing when we tell a story. We're leading millions of people on this journey from here to there. And we can't do it unless we're comfortable and confident about what our sensibility is. So listing your favorites and analyzing them is a way of sort of making, you already know what those are, but you're bringing it to a conscious level to go, yeah, I'm. I love these things and here's why I love them and I can talk about them with authority. And from that authority, you put that on the page and then it crackles in your own unique way and speaks to other people. About oh, uh, Russell Crowe and, I'm just, forgive me the name, it's where he's the tobacco insider. Insider. The insider, oh, yeah. I love Fan, that fantastic, yeah. So if that was on the same list as um, uh, Forrest Gump, so one connection I'm seeing um, with that movie is you have you know also kind of the both of them have like this innocent kind of flustered um main character i mean well yeah the, the, you know tom hanks character isn't flustered but he runs and <laughs> like crazy does i'm running but the the um the russell crowe character is totally flustered and overwhelmed and, and so to me those are very significant so if those were two of your favorites i would say there's something about being sort of in over your head uh, less, um, you know, sort of that fish out of water thing, but like, um, but just sort of innocently kind of stumbling into something and like it being like a really big deal. Um, so those to me are pretty significant. And um, with Insider, there's also, I mean, that's politically charged. Um, it's socially, social issue charged. Um, that one is, is grounded to Michael Mann, um, perhaps at his best, one of my favorites from him. And you got Pacino, who's um, this, you know, dynamic um, sort of crusader. Uh, and you have that beautiful scene in the courtroom of um, so good that well, that one actor I don't know his name, but he's in that courtroom scene, and he just he sticks to the tobacco company. He was just basically like, "Look, you knew this was wrong. You did it anyway, and it's now going to stop. You can't push us. You can't bully us anymore." So it's that that bullying thing. So maybe that's the theme in you. So again, those are just two movies. If you brought out the other five, you can start seeing some really significant connective tissue, um, and then if you you can almost see it like a Lego set, right? You're the Lego set of your favorite movies, and then you take that same Lego set, and then you create your own new movie with those same Legos, and maybe you add a few new ones. But like, you are much more likely to to write something that is so connected to like your soul for the reason that you came to the planet, that the the thing that, like. Who else are we going to go to about those movies but you because they're your favorite movies? You can teach anybody something about those movies because you're your favorite. So that's sort of the way 
that I help people get aligned with their superpower or where I do it myself for my own work. If I get a little bit kind of um, confused about something or a resistance, I'm like, well, how are they doing it in my favorite movies? And I kind of look at that <clears throat> and I learn and I go, okay, well, they did this and they did this and they did this. And I go, well, I'm doing this, this, and this. And then it's like, okay, well, how do I make those dots connect? How do I connect apples to apples with my favorites? Um, and, and then once I do it for me, I give it to somebody else and I go, are they seeing it? You know, because if it's, if it's just me, if I'm a professional, it can't be just me. It's got to be eliciting the reaction of the other people too, which is even more fun anyway. 